Hey YouTubers, Gary here. Um, today I'm working on the uh, Yamaha, Yamaha 350 Big Bear project and uh, what I'm going to be doing is fabricating a new intake manifold. Uh, the intake manifold is the item that connects the carburetor to the head on the motor. And uh, let's have a look and, and see why we have to fabricate one and then uh, the process that we'll be going through to do that. Okay, here on the head I'm getting ready to take off the, uh, here's the flange, it's bolted to the head and over here on the workbench here's the flange that uh, mounts on the carburetor. Now, as you can see, this is rubber coated and uh, you can see the, the, uh, what's left over of the rubber that used to go between these two flanges. There used to be a rubber that uh, went between them. It was all made into one piece. Actually this whole thing was uh, was kind of one piece made together. And uh, this part is uh, like $63. So instead of uh, purchasing a new one, I believe that I can fabricate one just as easy. that will work just as well. And uh, it won't cost virtually anything. Now here's what I've decided to use for the uh, go-between between those two. Here's an old uh, water hose off a vehicle. And as you can see here, this is almost the perfect dimension for that to fit down inside of. Kind of hard for me to hold the camera here. I don't have a tripod yet. Okay, but uh, you can get the idea there that uh, this will kind of fit in there nicely. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to uh, take a, clamp, a hose clamp, seat this, clamp it here. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to attach the other flange on this, hose clamp it, and uh, put it all together. And this should run. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fabricate this piece just a hair longer and uh, theoretically it should act as a ram air intake just like on an automobile. Uh, you know I'm not going to go overboard with it just a little bit and uh, if, it, if it doesn't run as well then I'll shorten it back down to the OEM size. So without any further uh, talk let's go ahead and uh, remove this flange from the engine. Now, first of all, that is a uh, <clears throat> metric Allen wrench. And uh, some years ago, I bought a metric Allen wrench set and I uh, have never had the opportunity to use it. But in this case, it looks like I'm finally going to get that opportunity. So, um, we'll bust that loose put it on the bench and uh, put it together. Now I had that piece of cloth in there for uh, <clears throat> purposes so that uh, no dirt would get inside of the uh, intake port so we'll go ahead and put this back in there You can see here, 
these uh, screws are got a lot of corrosion on them. Go ahead and we'll uh, clean these up also. Okay, there's the uh, there's the finished product after being wire wheeled. Uh, turned out really great. Now, <clears throat> let me point out one thing. I didn't wire wheel the bottom here because there's a rubber o-ring that's seated down inside of there. That's your seal uh, for this when it mates to the surface on the head, that rubber o-ring. Um, anyway, being that I used a solvent to uh, clean the back side, didn't use a wire wheel, and solvents are, are uh, they dry out quickly, so that uh, could endanger that seal by drying it out. So what I'll do is just take and put a bead WD-40 on there to kind of lubricate that seal. Okay, and uh, cleaned up the uh, cleaned up the bolts, so bolt that back down to the head. Uh, just a bit of trivia. Um, who knows? Who knows what the main ingredient is in WD-40? The base. The main ingredient in WD-40. Does anybody know? Well, WD-40 is uh, non-toxic. Um, out of the thousand and one uses for WD-40, I've even heard of people spraying it on their knees and rubbing it in that have arthritis that helps. Well, the main ingredient in WD-40 is fish oil. That's what WD-40 is. It has a few other properties, but the base, the main ingredient is fish oil. I was stunned when I found that out. And uh, WD-40 is an amazing product, as we all know. So, let's go ahead and cut our uh, manifold material. And just so that we don't lose them, we'll go ahead and put the uh, bolts for the flange. We'll go ahead and screw them back in the head here. Always a good idea to screw your bolts back in where they came from. Uh, because uh, nuts, and screws, and bolts have a way of coming up missing. This way they'll be there. I found that uh, a pair of tin snips works real well in uh, cutting this uh, automobile radiator hose. Anyway, I had to square that up and now I gotta clean that up. So let's do that. Well, as you can see, the uh, bench grinder fused very gently, did a very nice job cleaning that up. And I believe that this will fit in there nicely. Let's see. Look at that. All right, folks, there it is. There is our finished intake manifold for my ATV quad and the uh, only thing is I don't have the uh, hose clamps on it yet the reason why is because the flange that mounts on the head goes on at an angle and the flange that mounts to the carburetor goes on straight so I've got to do a little rotation uh, and then I'll mount the hose clamps on there but uh, I also want to point out that uh, this rubber hose is gas and oil resistant Okay, uh, if it was not gas and oil resistant, it would not be good for this uh, application because the gasoline air mixture would act as a disintegrating solvent and uh, it wouldn't last and it would hurt the motor carrying in bits and pieces of rubber. However, this hose is, uh, could be submerged in gasoline and be okay.